Hello plant people, it's Nora the Lekka Queen here. Thank you for joining me today on my channel. Today I will be showing you how to make a very simple aeroid mix. I use an aeroid mix for all my plants, aeroid plants that are living in soil. I don't have too many of them, but I do have some, and I will show you how to make that particular mix. I've got behind me here, my very, very massive golden ivies. There's another golden ivy there. They're huge and they're living in soil and they're living in my special aeroid mix. And I say special, it's nothing special. It's a very simple mix. There's so many things that you can do to make your potting mix better. And I've seen so many different kinds of very, very elaborate mixes out there. But mine is not too difficult. It's actually quite simple because I, you know, my ethos is to try and make things as easy as possible using things that you can easily find. So I will show you how to make that aeroid mix. And then I will show you how I pot up a plant using that mix. I'll put it up, put it up on a moss pole and put it in a pot, uh, in a pot and show you how I do this. So let's get started. What do we need to make that special mix? So you need to have some perlite. So this is perlite over here. Very, very easy to find product. That is perlite there. So just if, if you're not in a very well ventilated area, just dampen down the perlite because it can get rather dusty. And the reason I use perlite, so that's my perlite there. I use perlite. Perlite does three things for a potting mix. It improves the aeration, so it improves the air around the roots and that helps to prevent root rot. It also improves drainage. Perlite doesn't degrade, so it, it'll help keep that potting mix light and it'll help that water to see through, but it does also have water retention capabilities. So it'll do three things for your potting mix. Perlite is magic. So you need to have some perlite in your potting mix. The next thing that you need for my potting mix is horticultural charcoal. So this here is horticultural charcoal. What the horticultural charcoal does is basically what they say, keeping the potting mix sweet. So what that does is it actually pre it helps prevent growth of bacteria, fungi, you know, all the bad things that are going to help, you know, damage your plant. The other thing that it does, it does, it also improves with the odors. So, you know, charcoal actually absorbs odor. So your potting mix is not going to be smelly. So horticultural charcoal is an essential part of a potting mix. You should always add horticultural charcoal. The next thing that you need for my mix is that this is a chunky coarse orchid mix okay and this has lots of good it's got lots of bark it's got lots of very very chunky bits because aeroids like to attach to things and that will be good and the, the bark and the peat they're very good draining um, they've got very good draining properties. So you've got your, once you've got your perlite in there, you've got your charcoal and you've got your chunky mix that makes for a very light, well aerated and very well draining mix. So um, you could, you don't necessarily have to have an orchid mix. You could mix your own. You could get your own bark, you could get your own peat and all things like this. But I, don't really like to go down that route because that's way too many things to source. And unless you've got heaps and heaps of plants, it actually adds up to being a little bit more expensive. But one thing I will say about orchid mix is that I like to get my orchid mix from very, very small nurseries. So I will not go to my very, very big like store to get my orchid mix because every time I walk in there and I walk past the soils section, there's so many gnats flying around. So that is a breeding ground for fungus gnats and God knows what else. So I do not get any potting mix from large, large places that tend to have gnats flying around. So I got this orchid mix from a lovely small nursery close to where I live and they've got like 
five, six bags of things and it's all nice and clean. There's no flying things around. And when I actually emptied my bag into this pot, I did not see a single fungus gnat. So that's, that's really one of the best ways of keeping pests away from your home because you really bring them in with your potting mix, your potting mix and the soil from your plant. So try and eliminate pests at every step. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is actually put my gloves on. It's really important to protect yourself when you're working with things like soil. Ideally, I actually should have a mask on as well, uh, but I won't have the mask on because it's a bit fiddly talking with the mask and trying to make a YouTube video, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, I got my little gloves. Look at how cute my gloves are. They're so pretty, I love them. I, went, I was shopping with my daughters yesterday and my 11 year old saw these and she said, mommy, you must buy these. They're so pretty. And I said, you know what? You're right, I will buy them. So I'll get my gloves on, my pretty gloves, because we are working with soil and uh, we'll get straight into making the potting mix. So now, um, there are proportions that we are going to use. So we're not just mixing everything randomly. So with my mix, what I like to do is I will take four parts of the orchid mix, two parts of perlite and one part of the charcoal. So the definition of part can be anything. If you're using a pot, if you're using mills, if you're using whatever, you can use whatever measure you want, but these are the ratios that we're working with. So I will show you how I do this. This is what I'm going to use as my measuring device. So this is what's going to constitute one part. So this dish here is one part. So we're going to need one part of charcoal. So this is my charcoal here and one part so that is one part of charcoal i put my charcoal in that's my charcoal there and then we're going to need two parts of perlite so this is my perlite here and that's one part of perlite That's two parts perlite, okay? And then we're going to need four parts of orchid mix. So that is my orchid mix there. And I'm trying to get four parts of that. So that's one part. Two parts. three parts, four parts. So that is my mix there. And all I do is make sure that that is well mixed. And as you can see, there's lots and lots of chunky bits. That is very, very chunky. And you can see the, the white bits of perlite in there. And just looking at this, you can tell how different this looks from the potty mix that you actually buy from the store. The potty mix that you buy from the store does not look like that. So you really want your plants to be living in a mix that has these components in there. You want the mix to be well draining. You want it to be aerated and you want to have that charcoal in there to keep your, more, your, your mix nice and nice and sweet and protect your plant from bacteria and all those yucky smells. So that there is our potting mix. So what I'm now going to do is show you how to pot up this pothos plant. I've got this pothos plant here. I'm going to attach that to a moss pole that I made earlier. Um, if you haven't seen any of my videos about how to make a moss pole, just click on the link above and that'll take you straight to how I make a moss pole like this. 
I will attach that plant to the moss pole and pot it up in my pot using my potting mix. So for this potting, we are going to use a 14 centimeter pot. So you don't need to have a very, very large pot. I could have probably actually done with a smaller pot, but because I'm putting a moss pole in there, I need something that will actually be able to take the size of the moss pole as well. When I was making my moss pole, I took my mesh and I measured out how much space to leave at the bottom. This bit of the moss pole is what's going to go into the pot. So with this part of the moss pole that doesn't have any moss, I will actually fill this part with the potting mix. I will put the potting mix in there because the roots are actually going to be going through there. I'll show you how I do that. So I grab my pole and I simply put the mix in there. Okay, that mix will go in there. The next thing that we're going to do is actually grab our plant and attach it to the moss pole. So this is the bit of the plant that are actually going to be living in the pot. So this is where we want our roots to start. So that's where that goes. I've got another one here and I am going to put that there. So this is going to be in the soil. So I will grab my Velcro plant tie and attach the plant to the pole. And that is my plant. So my plant is now attached to the pole and the pole is filled with the mixture. I will now grab my pot, right? And I will put my pot like so. That's just to make it easier. Instead of having to flip it over, I do this. And then I straighten that up. And that's what my plant is going to look like. So all I need to do now is fill this pot with the mix. So I grab my mix and I fill the pot. So this is my plant. I have potted that up in a soil mixture using my chunky aeroid mix, attached it to my moss pole, and I will now just water it with Growth Technology Foliage Focus, and I will put it in a lovely bright spot and make sure that I keep the moss pole moist. I will give it a foliar spray time and again, and this plant in no time is going to look like the plants that I've got behind me. So it's really easy guys. Um, it's not something that's difficult to do. It's not very expensive, but doing this will ensure that your plant has got the best start. So thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Thanks, bye. <music>